What's up traders? Just want to take a look at XLY, consumer discretionary. I'm going to still be doing our monthly market wrap up as usual, but just want to focus in on some of the sectors here and some of the potential setups that we're seeing. So consumer staples have been doing pretty well and tend to when we're going into recession. That's more of like your regular necessities, your brands that people can't really avoid spending money on as where the consumer discretionary is a little bit more of like the luxury goods and tends to be like a little more of the high end spending. So before we actually take a look at the chart itself, let's take a look at exactly what composes the XLY. Because I think it's really important that before you get into a fund like this, you understand exactly what it is you're buying and whether or not that's the best way to get the exposure that you're after. So here we see the consumer discretionary select sector, Spider ETF, uh, 150 bucks it's trading at currently. And really what we want to look at is what's going on down here. So we see it's based on consumer services, 70%, consumer goods, 30%. So if we just take a look at the top 10 holdings and see exactly what this is and what it's composed of, we'll see that actually these top 10 holdings totaled up are about 75% of the fund. So realistically, this is what you're getting exposure to. Everything else is going to be like under 2%. So that being said, we see right off the bat that 23% of this fund is Amazon. And then 13.5% is Tesla. 9.36 is Home Depot. Then we see Nike, McDonald's, Starbucks, Lowe's. All those are around 5 or 4%. And then we have Booking Holdings at 3.3. TJ Maxx at 2.91 and then O'Reilly Automotive at 1.82. So like I said, these top 10 holdings are 75% of the fund. And realistically, if we just look at these top three, it's basically 50% of the fund. So essentially you're buying Amazon, Tesla, and Home Depot, and that's making up half of your exposure. And then everything else all added together is the other half. So if you're bullish on Amazon, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you're not bullish on Amazon, you might want to think twice about this sector ETF because Amazon making up 23%, if you're expecting it to perform poorly, is going to really drag down the performance overall. And because right now we really don't know what's going to happen going forward, there's a very strong case for sustained inflation for decades out. There's a strong case for disinflation or even potentially deflation. And if I came back from the future 10 years from now and told you either one of those situations played out, I don't think it would be that hard to believe. So the real question is, if we do get exposure to something like this on a long-term time frame, is it going to do well in recession? Is it going to do well in inflation? So now that we took a look at the actual breakdown and what's in it and what percentages and all that good stuff, let's take a look at the actual chart. So here is the actual chart. We have the lows down here from March of 2020. We all know what that was. That was at $88. And then we see the highs here in November of 2021, and that's at $212. And we see here we flipped from a bull market whenever we were above the blue slope lines into a bear market. And now here we're actually fighting to reclaim the bull market. So let's just switch back to our candlesticks. And here we can see essentially a little more clear picture. So if we're just focusing in on this area right here, we bounce back up, retest the 200s, it fails, we go to a new low. We bounce back up, we retest the 200s, it fails, it goes to a higher low. So that is like our first signs that potentially, you know, we're gonna start into an uptrend. So we have a low, then we have a high, then we have a higher low. The next thing we're looking for is a higher high. And we're almost there, 156 would be a higher high on this. And now that we're back above the 200 exponential and simple, they're very close to both flipping blue. So we saw the 200 simple was blue here for a bit and then actually flip back down red. And then we see the 200 exponential was red here for a bit and finally flip blue. So if we just stay above this level for long enough, the 200 simple is going to level back out and then flip blue. And then that's actually like the start of a bull trend. And the reason that's what we're always looking for and why it's so important is if we zoom back here to that Rona low, we'll see that we bounce up against the 200s a couple of times. And then once we got on top of them and flipped the slope blue, the 200 exponential got on top right here. And it was just parabolic after that. We went a long time without even coming back down. We finally came back down, retested them in March of 2021, found support, and then continued to the upside. And then once we started threatening those levels again, and we had clearly put in an M double top topping pattern, measure move back down, the back test of the 200s, and then this is where we get very, very bearish. The same way that we buy the 200 simple on the back test at the start of a bull trend, we sell the 200 exponential and simple on the back test at the start of a bear trend. And obviously the trend determines simply 
based on the TJD Master, which is using the 200 exponential and simple moving average slopes. So it looks like there's a lot going on here, but it's really not that much. Uh, if we just zoom out here real quick, we'll just do the breakdown. It's the same stuff we always draw on every chart. We just have one fib going from the macro low in March up to the macro high, and that one is the multicolored fib. And then we see another fib in orange going from the macro high down to the macro low. And then we see one channel descending right here with clear touches on the top multiple times and then clear touches on the bottom now we only have two here on the bottom so it's not as nice but we see how strong the heart line is acting as support along the way as well so we can see there's definitely some nice confluence here even though we don't get as many touches on the bottom as we would normally like so that being said we started to form once we put in that higher low we started to form another channel now so we have that lowest low, we push up, get one push to the upside, come back down, find support, and that's when we draw in our channel. And we've been basically just hanging out at the bottom of the channel, but slowly creeping up. So if this is going to be a bullish trend reversal and essentially flipping into the bull trend, like we're starting to see, what we would expect is after our higher low to then put in a higher high. So if we take this point out, we start looking at what's our next level to pay attention to. Well, we see the orange 382 right here, and then we see the orange 0.5 next. So our entry is going to be basically like the breakout above the green 382, the back test of that level, the support of the ascending channel. And then we're potentially looking for a move, not just back to the 382, the last support, but to a new high, which would give us right around the heart line, which would give us right around that 0.5. 10.5% upside, 4.37% downside, and that's going to give us a 2.5 to 1 risk reward ratio. Now, you guys know that when we're trading with a trend, it's okay to take a 2 to 1 ratio trade for my trading standards. But if we're trading against the trend, we want at least a 3 to 1 to increase our risk reward because we have a lower probability of success trading against the trend. So in this case, we're kind of still in between because we have one blue 200 and one pink 200, but we're very close to confirming the bull trend. So the idea being, we don't want to be in this trade anymore if we take out that low and we lose these 200s because it's probably just going to be a failed breakout or rejection. But also, we're at a bunch of support in the 200 exponential and simple and the 382 in green and then the ascending channel here. We already broke out of the descending channel. We back tested it as support. So to me, this looks like a cluster of support right here that's meant to be bought. So I'm taking the entry from this level and I'm looking for my initial target up and that 10.6% at about 164. And then we're looking at actually a higher target as well. If and when we get up to the 618, we see that was a key level for that push up here that got rejected. So that would give us a target closer to like 175 and the risk reward would be 17.6% upside with about 4.3% downside and four to one. So we'll take some off the table if and when we get to a 0.5 and then we'll take the majority if not all of our profits when we get to the 618 depending what the markets look like but we no longer want to be in the trade if we start breaking down and we lose the 236 because more likely than not we're going to be revisiting the lows now let's say hypothetically we lose the 236 we get out of the trade we come down here we take out this previous low and then we find support at the green 0.5 and a higher low right here is it possible we then push all the way back up and continue the upside? It definitely is. And we don't know what the economic environment is going to look like or what the fundamentals are going to be that's driving this price action. But the truth is, as long as we continue to put in higher lows, that's fine, even if we take out our old higher low. But what's more likely to happen is that we'll put in a higher high and continue this trend to the upside since we've gotten this breakout. Now, typically what we're looking for when we break out of a range like this channel it's just going to be the measure move from the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel. So if this is our breakout point right here, we would expect a potential move back up here to like 200. Now, obviously, I'm still pretty bearish on the overall environment. We're not seeing great breath in the market. Actually, it's pretty narrow and it's a lot of like really speculative stuff that's been running lately. So more likely than not, this is like an A consolidation to the downside. We're now getting like a B move to the upside or like a dead cat bounce off those lows. And then realistically, probably going to be going into a C and continue to the downside. So this play is not some position that we want to open up and just hold on to for the rest of our lives and hodl. We're more just looking to scalp like 10 to 20%. So could we get the full measure move up here and make it to like the 786? It's definitely possible. And we can slap a third trade setup on here. And that would be around 28% to the upside. But the truth is, we've seen most things get up to the 0.5 and then top out. Some of the stronger things have made it to the 618. But some of the stuff that has broken out of their descending channels, back tested, and then hasn't even broken up to the 0.5 yet, or like underperforming like some of the stronger stuff, 
oftentimes before they get to complete their move, the market rolls back over and they run out of time. Because basically what happens is everybody buys into some strong stocks or a couple important names. They move to the upside. And then as people take their profits out of the early performers, they try to move into stuff that's in the same space that hasn't performed yet. And they sort of like broaden out a little bit. And then after those things move to the upside, people continue to do the same thing and same thing. And you just go further and further out the risk curve, looking for those underperformers until eventually the trend either rolls over or just everything is back in a bull trend. So we don't know which one's going to happen, but it's worth paying attention to. So I'm not particularly bullish right now on consumer discretionary, but we do see a pretty nice setup right here. You could argue there's a lot of common signs right here of essentially what looks like a sort of like demented head and shoulders type thing. This makes it a little bit messy for me, but I could see a left shoulder right here with the neckline, the head, the neckline again, the right shoulder, and then we're back at the neckline. So the measure move breakout would essentially be the measure move from the head down. When I'm using head and shoulder or really any pattern, I want the pattern to be very clean. And because this really isn't that clean, I don't want to give too much favor to it because of this right here, this like failed breakout. But the truth is the measure move lines up with the 618, which is already one of our targets anyway. So it's worth paying attention to, and we really don't have to be doing anything differently. So before we wrap this one up, I do want to pay attention to the 236. It's kind of here in the middle of nowhere between the 0.5 and the 618. So there's definitely a possibility that we essentially bounce the 0.5, find resistance at the 382, put in a higher low, continue to the upside, and we make it all the way back to that 236 in red. So realistically, unless things change and the market overall sentiment shifts, most of these trade setups that we're in right now or we're looking to get into are just scalps. And in this case, that's exactly what XLY is. So with favorable risk reward ratio, essentially coin toss probability of success, as long as we keep our position size reasonable, it's a nice trade setup. And if we're wrong, we're only really losing about half of what we'd be making. And if we start hitting some of our upside targets, it's closer to like two or three times as much as we'd be losing. So yeah, that's it for XLY. Fundamentally, it's hard to make a case for some of these various sectors right now. But just like we had with tech and AI, the fundamentals didn't look particularly good, but the trade setups did. And now here we are up 20, 30, 50, or even over 100% on some of our AI plays. So that being said, it's not always easy to build a case based on fundamentals. So you're much better off trusting the technicals in my experience. So yeah, just wanted to talk about consumer discretionary, kind of break that down. And uh, we'll be back with the monthly market wrap up. Before we get out of here though, I do just want to remind you that's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. So please do your own research and trade responsibly. Crypto Trend Trader, and I'll catch you on the flip side.